السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, so, uh, الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ونو ألا. Uh, uh, اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إنك أنت العليم الحكيم. ربنا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. Okay, so, uh, my dear respected brothers, sisters and elders, uh, so today inshallah uh, as you may know, that we'll talk about, uh, we'll have a short talk about the magnificent mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, how we attain that mercy, how, uh, what is uh, the description or some of the description of that mercy and uh, how would that inshallah impact our life, our ibadah, our worshipping, our salah, our prayers, our dua, everything. Uh, so if we speak about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the first thing, it's actually the first thing that permit any Muslim or any believer to enter the paradise or enter Jannah. Uh, so without that mercy, no one will uh, survive uh, or find salvation uh, in uh, and enter, uh, the paradise or Jannah. As the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said in a hadith, وَقَارِبُوا وَسَدِّدُوا وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّهُ لَنْ يَنْجُوا أَحَدٌ مِنْكُمْ بِعَمَلِهِ فَقِيلَ وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ قَالَ وَلَا أَنَا إِلَّا أَنْ يَتَغَمَّدَنِ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلٍ In a translation of that hadith, so uh, the Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, advises us to follow the right path as much as we can and uh, uh, we uh, keep on that path. And keep in mind that none of you achieve salvation through the, uh, the, uh, his good actions or good deeds. So one of the Sahaba says, not even you, uh, O Messenger of Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, not even me unless Allah grant me his mercy and grace. So uh, from here, let's, um, when we speak, as I said, about the mercy or Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start to... Uh, let's start to deepen our knowledge and awareness about this uh, and we, we're going to quote some verses from the Quran and some uh, hadith uh, that inshallah will enlighten us about that past mercy and how we uh, inshallah attain it. So the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you may know, that one of the, uh, as you surely know, it's one of the virtues of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's a Rahman al-Rahim. So uh, it's actually the first thing when we open the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the uh, translation of the opening uh, of that, uh, the Quran. So oh, it's, it's like so it's like the door uh, uh, to uh, read the Quran. So in Surah Al-Fatiha, the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described himself with is al-Rahman al-Rahim. So we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we praise uh, uh, all the praises due to Allah, the Lord of uh, the, uh, uh, the mankind or, or the Lord of this world. So he, uh, the Lord of that world, everyone eventually, or anyone who read, uh, who's that the Lord of the, what is the virtue or what's, uh, who's at that, uh, the, uh, who's our Lord, I would say, or who is Allah, who's Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight after the, that, the, the second ayah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could describe himself with any virtue of the 99 names uh, that we know. But he chose to start the Quran, the, the first surah in the Quran, and describe himself as Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. That means he wants us to know that he is indeed Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, and we need to know what does that mean, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. So in Arabic, they say that Ar-Rahman is um, uh, it's a, it's a name that um, uh, meaning that uh, that is uh, he, he's he's the one who owned the Rahma or the mercy or the general mercy for all mankind, whether they believe or non-believe. For example, you know, in this dunya, the, uh, the non-believer or non-Muslims, they get the, all the, um, uh, uh, whatever, the money, the food, that's all from the rahmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's so, so which they call it the general rahmah, the general 
general mercy that in, uh, include everyone or all uh, uh, every creature in this world but ar rahim <coughs> ar rahim means uh, uh, the scholar said that uh, it's a special rahma or special mercy for the believer or for the muslims inshallah so in that uh, uh, context i would say the verses there is so many verses that talks about the, uh, the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as one of the verses in Surah Al-Araf says, وَرَحْمَتِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ And my mercy encompasses all things. Not all mankind, all things. كُلَّ شَيْءٍ So whether it's um, uh, human or mankind or whether it's animal, etc. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Till, uh, O Muhammad, inform my servant that I am the forgiving one and the merciful one. نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أني أنا الغفور الرحيم. So Allah subhanahu wa taala tells the prophet, tell them, oh Muhammad, uh, Muhammad that uh, that I am the most merciful or the, the forgiving one and the most merciful one. And also in a different, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, كتب ربكم على نفسه الرحيم. And your Lord has decreed upon Himself mercy. So of course, Allah subhanahu wa taala, no one can force Him to do anything. He's the Lord of the, uh, uh, the heaven and earth and everything. So he himself decreed upon himself at the mercy. So in these things, with these uh, verses in, in our mind, we can conclude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all the uh, believers, all the mankind, uh, I would say all the mankind, to know that he is indeed the one who owned the mercy and he is the most merciful one. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with that, uh, of course, it's going to uh, raise the question um, uh, to anyone. So Allah, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, wants to punish us or want to have mercy on us or forgive us? And again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Quran, uh, 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 reply to that kind of questions, ما يفعل الله بعذابكم إن شكرتم وآمنتم وكان الله شاكرا عليما. The translation of that verse, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with your punishment if, you're, if you were grateful and believed? And ever, uh, and ever Allah uh, appreciative and knowing. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it's clearly in that verse, it's like telling us what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do with punish, punish, uh, your punishment or punishing you if you were grateful and believed. What Allah subhanahu wa there, there, there's no benefit, I would say, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he punished us, or there is uh, no, nothing will, uh, will uh, be taken from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we uh, commit sin. And, I, and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse uh, confirmed this. It says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَكُمْ وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سُنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَيَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ والله يريد أن يتوب عليكم ويريد الذين تبعون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان ضعيف. So Allah سبحانه وتعالى clearly in three verses uh, tells us that Allah wants to make clear to you the law, uh, make clear to you the what's haram and what's uh, not haram and guide you to the practice or the good practice of those before you and accept your repentance and Allah is knowing and wise. And again, he um, uh, repeat that in the, the, the verse after that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed want to accept your repentance. So what is the repentance? Of course, it's, you know, we leave the, uh, uh, we uh, ask Allah for forgiveness for our sins and we uh, leave that sin. So, uh, uh, and I, so again, this is uh, replied if, uh, to the question, is, does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to punish us or want to have mercy on us? And it's clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the most merciful, uh, merciful one, and he, he doesn't want to punish us. Indeed, he wants to have mercy uh, uh, upon us. Okay, so what is that mercy? What's the description of that mercy? We know, okay, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is it the same as uh, the mercy from uh, one uh, uh, creation to another, uh, uh, like uh, one man to another man, or a human being to animal, whatever? Uh, and again, uh, hadith is actually reply to that and uh, uh, in that authentic hadith that the Prophet Muhammad says 
ان لله 100 رحمه انزل منها رحمه واحده بين الجن والانس والبهائم والهوام فيها يتعاطفون وبها يتراحمون وبها تعطف الوحش على ولدها واخر الله 99 رحمه يرحم بها عباده يوم القيامه so it was narrated in the, the translation of that hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he uh, the, uh, has 100 uh, when uh, has 100 parts of the mercy one part was sent down to the earth so if, oh, everything in the earth that for example the animals how the mother and uh, 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 have mercy on and their sons or their children, the people have mercy on each other, all the mercy on the face of it is, is just one part of an of a hundred part that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. So the, what about the 99 part? In that hadith, Allah, uh, the Prophet Muhammad tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept 99 parts of they, that mercy on the day of judgment. So what do we have? Whatever the mercy you see on the, in the face of earth, that and even some of the scholars says that uh, the, uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, himself, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil'alamin," and verily we didn't send you except for uh, as a mercy for the uh, mankind, that rahma is part of the one that is sent down to the earth. So all this mercy that you see on the face of earth, it's just one part, and we've got we still have. And 99 parts, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved it for the believer on the day of judgment. Uh, so when you, when you think about that there's an, still 99 parts of that, mercy, of that mercy still on the day of judgment, so we, alhamdulillah, yani, alhamdulillah, we have still 99 parts yani, on the day of judgment uh, to have that mercy. And another hadith, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, with his companion, he was sitting uh, and saw um, a woman looking for her child. She, so she was, uh, I think she, uh, she lost her child and she was uh, looking for the child. So when she, find, she found her child, she took the child and um, hugged him and started breastfeeding him. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the companion, do you think that this woman, uh, they will uh, throw her child in the, in the fire? The dunya fire. All the Sahaba said, no, of course not. No. Even uh, as long as she can save him from the fire, yes, uh, she, she will never, she will never ever throw him in the, in the fire. So he, uh, the Prophet Muhammad replied with a great statement. He said, So Allah, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more merciful with his servants more than this woman with her child. So you would never imagine that a parent, whether uh, uh, father or mother, would throw their children in the fire. And it, uh, imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far more merciful, 99 parts, as we said, uh, that he, he would uh, with his servant. So Allah, that means we conclude from this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is actually far more merciful than our own parents. Uh, and uh, this, in, uh, again, well, in, uh, I mean, when, when we think about this, uh, we cannot even imagine, I would say, how is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, magnificent, uh, magnificent and uh, uh, how it's uh, vast and, and, and huge. So, and uh, some of the scholars, when, you, when they talk, uh, or not uh, to, uh, to be honest, not the scholars, it's just actually in the verses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most of the verses, or many verses, says, Al Ghafur Rahim, the most forgiving, the most merciful. So the scholars said, uh, we have, uh, uh, well, de defined each part. So the, 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 they define the mercy, the forgiveness, and the pardon, which is Al Ghafur. So they say, uh, well, there is a lot of uh, opinion about this. So they say, uh, some of them said that al-afu yakun al al-kabair. So the pardon is a, it's for the major sins. Forgiveness about the major uh, minor sins and al-rahma or the mercy would be from in, uh, by increasing the hasanat or increasing the uh, reward of good deeds. Uh, other scholars said that al-afu or the pardon is when it when we uh, to, to forgive our shortcoming in our worships, 
and the maghfirah uh, or forgiveness is the wiping of the sins and al-rahma is the reward at the end when uh, and uh, to enter the paradise and that's why what we say always allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the surah al-baqarah the last verse uh, or the last bit of the last verse in surah al-baqarah wa'fu anna waghfir lana warhamna so all these three combined together in the last verse of uh, surah al-baqarah so um and it's amazing that we, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his vast mercy, in Islam, he actually teaches us how to uh, be forgiven, teaches us how to attain this mercy, teaches us how to reach to that mercy. Uh, yeah, it's not only he's, uh, he's actually merciful before that, and also teach you how to attain more mercy and also uh, save a 99 part of, of his mercy on the day of judgment. So uh, everyone knows the story of Adam alayhi salam where we, uh, he uh, descended to the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him in the, uh, in, it tells us in the Quran, فَتَلَقَّ آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ And then Adam received from his Lord some words and he accepted his, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance. Indeed, it is he who is accepting the repentance and is the most uh, merciful. So what is what are those words that uh, uh, that been uh, uh, that been uh, taught to uh, Adam عليه uh, السلام? It's uh, it's another verse. قال ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين. So Allah subhanahu wa taala again out of His mercy teaches a lot of uh, uh, du'a in the Quran until uh, uh, starting from Al Fatiha. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, what we say after we praise him, we say, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the most important uh, dua or the most important thing that you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to ask for guidance and hidayah to the straight path. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ What is the Sirat al-Mustaqim? Sirat al-Ladheen an'amta alayhim. So every day in our uh, prayers, uh, whether it's the five obligate prayer or any prayer, you have to start with the Fatiha. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah, give, teach us how to uh, uh, pray for him, how to ask him how to make the dua and uh, how to attain that mercy. And there is a lot of verses in the Quran about this. رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّتَاعٍ وَجَعَلْنَا الْمُتَّقِينِ مَامَا رَبَّنَا لَا تَجَعَلْنَا فِتْنَةٍ وَقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا النَّسِينَ وَأَخْطَأْنَا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وعفو عنا وغفر لنا ورحمنا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many verses in the Quran you see that it, he's actually teaching us uh, as uh, Muslims how to uh, pray and how to uh, make dua for him and, uh, to attain the, uh, the, that mercy so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, with that uh, in mind, I mean, when we know, we we've known, uh, we talked about the uh, mercy and how to uh, he taught us how to uh, pray for him for and ask for that mercy. Uh, we uh, Subhanallah know indeed that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala would never teach us all of that, and that at the end of the uh, uh, day, He's not gonna uh, have mercy on us. And uh, in, uh, there is a, a hadith, subhanAllah, the Prophet Muhammad uh, hadith Qudsi. So uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad uh, said that uh, uh, a servant uh, or, or, or an, a man, he committed a sin. And then he felt regret. And uh, he, uh, he actually uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the first time, for, Oh Allah, forgive my sin. Allahumma fili dhanbi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, uh, 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 speaking to the angel, So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels that the, my servant has committed a sin, but he know that after committing a sin and regretted, he know that he has a Lord that account, uh, uh, forgive the sins and may uh, uh, account him or punish him for that sin. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive his sin for that. He came back and some of the scholars for that hadith, they say he committed the same sin again. 
Oh, no, and regret it and say again, Allah, uh, oh Allah, I committed a sin, for, please forgive me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated the same thing. So uh, my servant has committed a sin and has known that he's, he has a Lord who forgives the sins and who can punish for that, uh, uh, so forgive his sin. The third time, again, uh, he did the, uh, uh, the same sin and again said, Allah, oh Allah, uh, forgive my sin, Allahumma ghfir li dhanbi. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the third time told the angel, أَذْنَبَ عَبْدِي ذَنْبًا فَعَلِمَ أَنَّ لَهُ رَبًّا يَغْفِرُ الذَّنْبًا وَيَأْخُذْ ذَنْبْ اِعْمَلْ مَا شِئْ فَقَدْ غَفُرْتُ لَكَ Meaning, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated, uh, uh, my servant has committed a sin and has known that he has a Lord who has forgiven the sin and punishes for the sin. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do what you wish, I have forgiven your sins. And in another narration of the hadith, be my witness for the angel, be my witness that I forgive all the sins for, uh, for my servant. So with that um, hadith in mind, uh, so is it uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to, uh, uh, to do the sins or it tells us to repent? So it's not a call to, uh, to do more sins. It's, the, it's, it's actually a call never ever feel despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, as he says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the, uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say, O oh Muhammad, that uh, all my servants, all my, uh, uh, my slaves, do not, uh, who wasted their time, as asrafu in the, in the Arabic means wasted their, their uh, time in committing sin. Not, so, so he's not calling the one who uh, follow the right path or who pray, or he is actually calling the one who's wasted their age, uh, their time or their age in committing sin. And what is he telling them? I'm, I'm going to punish you? No, he's telling them, uh, uh, never ever feel despair of the mercy of Allah, subhanahu, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never feel uh, despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, Allah will forgive, uh, can forgive all the sins. And He's the most uh, forgiving one and He's the most merciful one. So it's not, a, a, so it's part of the human na nature, I would say, that uh, we're going to commit sin. It's, it's part of the human nature. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us many times in, in the Quran <clears throat> and also in the hadith. Always go come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the end of the day, where are you going to run away? I mean, you cannot hide anywhere from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, the more you do istighfar, the more you ask for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never feel, uh, will never yeah, make you despair of his mercy and will never, uh, I would say, uh, reject uh, the, the servant or the, uh, anyone who asks for the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the only one, yeah, I mean, if, even if our parents, if we knock their door five times a day, I mean, uh, at the end of the, uh, maybe a third time, fifth time, or even another time, they, uh, you, uh, I mean, they will say, stop, I mean, uh, that's enough. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we knock his door five times a day, and maybe more, if you do the sunnah, so you're knocking the door of, the, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and asking for his mercy, and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do more, uh, uh, come back again and again and again. It doesn't matter how, ma how many sins you've done, there is always a way back to uh, uh, ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is always a way back, inshallah, to attain that mercy. And in, in that matter, there is a beautiful hadith uh, on uh, uh, Anas radiallahu anhu, qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, قال الله تعالى that's a hadith قدسي يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان منك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك يا ابن آدم إنك لو آتيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفر the meaning of the translation of that hadith Allah سبحانه وتعالى says uh, O son of Adam as long as you supplicate uh, to me and ask me, I shall forgive you what you have done, and I shall not mind or I shall not care about what, what you've done. O oh, son of Adam, if your, son, if your sins were to reach the clouds of the sky, 
And then you came asked for forgiveness, for my forgiveness, I would forgive you. The old son of Adam, if you come to me on the day of judgment, if you come to me with the sins as great as the earth, I don't, uh, as great as the earth, and uh, came to me at the day of judgment, worshiping no partner with, uh, no partner with me, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, says, I would grant you forgiveness as great as your sins. So uh, as much as your sins is, there is as much as it, uh, forgiveness and mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, in that hadith tells us the, uh, the one and only condition for that is to worship Allah alone. La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. So uh, there's, all, there's no God but Allah uh, that uh, uh, worthy of worship. Uh, in, uh, in this um, uh, universe. So Allah, uh, and again, now we know how, uh, uh, subhanAllah, how big the mercy and how uh, uh, the description of that mercy would say. So how do we attain this mercy while we, uh, I mean, uh, in this life? There is so many ways, uh, I mean, to attain the forgiveness and mercy. And uh, the Prophet Muhammad told us, uh, uh, and even in the Quran told us, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in many verses. So, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِن تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَنُدْخِلُكُمْ مُدْخَلًا كَرِيمًا If you avoid the major sin which you are forbidden, uh, you, we, shall, uh, we will wipe uh, or we'll, we will remove from, your, uh, from you your minor sins or lesser sins and admit you to the paradise or a noble entrance. Again, الذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش إلا اللمم إن ربك واسع المغفرة. Those who avoid the major sins and immort uh, uh, and فواحش and only committing the minor sins, indeed, your Lord is has a uh, uh, vast forgiveness or uh, 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 huge forgiveness. So uh, in the verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us: as long as you avoid the major sin. All the minor sins, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. How? Again, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu in the hadith tells us that as salawatul khams wal jum'atu ila jum'ah wa ramadanu ila ramadan mukaffiratum ma bainahun idha ishtunibat al kabair. The five daily uh, prayers or the prescribed uh, prayers, Friday to the next Friday and the uh, Ramadan to the next Ramadan um, uh, is, uh, is going uh, to wipe all your uh, sins uh, that co you that commit between them as long as you uh, avoid the major sins. So uh, uh, there's so many seasons, there's so many ways to uh, forgive our sin or to ask Allah uh, attain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even, uh, you know, after the salah, the dhikr after the salah, whoever says subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu akbar, 33 times, and uh, at the one uh, the, uh, completed with the 100 saying, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu mulku wa lahu alhamdu wa lahu shayin qadir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe all the sins, all the previous sins, uh, even if it's as much as the uh, form that uh, of the sea, the form that is, uh, on, on, you can see in the uh, on top of the sea. Um, so, and, and again, uh, whoever says Allah uh, subhanallah wa bihamdi 100 times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all the sins. And again, siyam, uh, whoever uh, fast and uh, pray during Ramadan will forgive, uh, forgive all the previous sins. Whoever uh, fast the day of Arafah, forgive the sin of the last year and the uh, previous year and the uh, coming year. Whoever fast the, the, the day of Ashura, we will get uh, forgiven uh, for the past sins. So all of these together, it's just a lot of ways and simple ways to get the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, it tells us, it proves to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to have his mercy on us and wants actually to forgive all our sins and he actually doesn't want to punish us. And uh, uh, subhanAllah, uh, and again, um, uh, if uh, in another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says in, in, a, in a slave of Allah who commit a sin, then he perfect his uh, purification, purif uh, purification, like doing wudu, and stand to pray two rak'ah of prayer, then ask Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala for forgiveness, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will uh, forgive his sins. 
if you commit any sins, then um, uh, do wudu, uh, pray two raka'ah, and inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive uh, 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 that sin. Again, another, another uh, simple thing that we can say uh, when we pray uh, jama'ah, so Allah, uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, when the Imam says, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين, so the the the, the ma'mum or the people who pray with, uh, with him, uh, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, say Ameen. So who, uh, if anyone, if that Ameen, uh, the word that you, uh, that you say, synchronize with those the angels see, uh, say, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all the previous sins. So when we say Ameen, the angels will say Ameen. And if that goes uh, synchronized with each other, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive that sin, uh, your, your previous sins. Uh, and again, another simple thing, if two Muslims meet and shake their hand, their sin would be forgiven as they uh, depart or separate from each other. So if you find your brothers, salamu alaykum, salam, shake their hands, uh, or sister, and then uh, you spoke about anything that is not haram, inshallah, you, when, when everyone goes their way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive the sin. Uh, again, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says, whoever says, Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illahu al-Hayyu al-Qayyum wa tubu lay, Allah will forgive him even if he, is, he was running away from the enemy army in, during a war. And you know, running away uh, from an, uh, during a war or escaping and leave the, the uh, Muslim's army, that's one of the major sins. So if you say Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Ladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-Hayy al-Qayyum wa tubu lay, Allah subhanahu wa taala will forgive your sin, even that sin. So when you when you sins when you have sins of that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa taala and all these uh, uh, verses, hadith, and it tells you how Allah subhanahu wa taala is merciful. I believe you it will affect our worship, uh, our salah. So when, whenever you stand again in the salah and you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, feel that in, in our heart. And then that worship will be uh, uh, conducted differently. It's, uh, and of course, uh, it's not only that we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so we, we have to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because there is, there is always a balance between fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also uh, uh, loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you feel that, uh, I mean, uh, the love to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will perform the salat differently and, in, uh, and, and you'll feel, as, Allah, as, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says, arihna biha ya Bilal, when he, uh, with, uh, it's like telling Bilal to uh, call for the prayer so he can feel relaxed and feel comfortable. So Allah, uh, as you all know, that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he used to find his comfort and relaxation and uh, to be uh, relaxed during the salah. How do we attain that? It's not only by fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are standing in front of the most merciful one that we recite every, in every salah and in every rak'ah, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim. And of course, uh, as we said, the, the salah the, uh, will wipe all the sins. Um, in, and in that, in that hadith, uh, there, is a, there is a hadith, uh, authentic hadith, that an Ibn Mas'ud, that a man came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and told him, oh, bro, oh Messenger of Allah, um, I've done something wrong. So what is the something that, that, uh, that, that this man done? He actually, uh, and according to the hadith, he kissed a woman that is haram, and he, that is not his wife. Uh, or as, he kissed a woman, and the, so he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Oh, the, oh, the, oh Messenger of Allah, I have done a very bad thing." And of course, it's a very bad thing. I mean, when you think about, he, he's not going to find anyone in the street, but there is an, a, a, there is an, a, a huge introduction before that. So they. Uh, he allured the woman, he uh, went in, in a, in a, uh, to hide someplace, and then what happened, happened. So, the, so he thought, I mean, there is, had, there is something that, that, that uh, the Prophet Muhammad will punish him for that. Uh, so the Prophet Muhammad said, uh, um, he, he went away of, uh, of him, or uh, he just uh, left him, 
And then he called, uh, he called him again. And he told him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verse. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُولَفَ مِنَ الْلَيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَةِ So he asked him, did you pray with us? Can, it, it was the time of Asr. Did you pray with us Asr? He said, yes, O oh, Messenger of Allah. And so he said, go, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgive your sin. As long as, you know, you, you don't go back to that. So it's not about, it's not about feeling despair. Even if, of course, we're going to feel bad when we do the sins. But at the end of the day, there is always a way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say, astaghfirullah, or, or in a dhikr, like, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, wallahu akbar, alhamdulillah, wa la hawla, wa la quwata, illa billah. Which, which is called the last, uh, the lasting good deeds or al baqiyatu salihat which is the most beloved words to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told us, also in a hadith, that these words, it will uh, wipe your sin or let your sin fall off you like the leaves falling off the uh, tree branch. So Allah, uh, uh, with this in mind, and as I said, you know that, uh, or you understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful and how much he loves us. Oh. So, uh, and, and, and I think we should love him back. And we, we, when we uh, look in the Quran, the verse, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ Everyone, I think, know that verse. Uh, but we always focus on the second part. فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهِ what, what, what about the first part? قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ Do you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when we uh, have that uh, awareness about the vast mercy he has and how he actually provides us and how we uh, have his mercy in many different ways and in, uh, for different people, uh, of course we're going to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we were going to uh, worship him uh, the way he should be uh, or the best uh, practice in the best way uh, that we can do. And, uh, and in that, حديث ان هذا ان حديث ذا بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم سيز يقول الله عز وجل انا عند ظن عبدي بي وانا معه حين يذكرني الله سبحانه وتعالى سيز از ترانسليشن اي ام از ماي سليفز ثينكس اباوت مي اور ثينكس اوف مي اند اي ام وذ هيم وين هي ريمبرز مي سو هاو هاو دو يو مين هاو وات دو يو ثينك اباوت الله سبحانه وتعالى then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, will grant for you. So, and I hope everyone goes out from here uh, when we leave. We have in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful one, and we pray for that mercy in this uh, dunya and in the hereafter. And of course, once we get uh, that mercy, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant us paradise. And uh, uh, the last part about this mercy here, uh, it's the, uh, so in the, in the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu told us about the mercy on the day of judgment. And when you think about the mercy on the, on the day of judgment, it's, it, it's not comparable even to the mercy that we're talking about in dunya. So Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la, the one example, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta-A'la will uh, call for the believer and uh, uh, put the, the, the veil or the uh, sitter, I would say, so it, or cover for, uh, on, on him that no one else will see uh, the, uh, the, that person. It's like, uh, So everyone will be accounted for themselves. So, well, well uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call him and will show him, did you know this sin? You commit this sin on that day, on that, in that hour, in that moment. And, and the believer would say, oh, uh, would never deny any sin. Because, you know, uh, we know uh, he knows all the sin. Yes, uh, oh my Lord. If any sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, do you know this sin? He says, yes, oh my Lord. And he, on that day, uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling him, on that day of, ju- uh, the day of judgment, or in that situation, that person will feel that he's, he's doomed. He's going to the hell. After all the sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him about, he's, he's doomed. He's going to the uh, hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to him, I, uh, 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 So I've uh, uh, I mean, had sitter or, uh, or uh, covered uh, your sins in, uh, in this dunya 
So I'm gonna for, uh, I'm going to forgive it on, uh, or um, I will forgive it on this day. So and uh, 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 permit him to enter the paradise. That's one part of uh, uh, another example of the mercy on the judgment. Another example that um, one of one uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad says one man of my ummah will be called on the day of judgment uh, uh, um, in front of all of all the the uh, people in front of all the creation. So the angel will come and bring him 99 records. All of them are sins. 99 records. And each record, not 99, each record is as far as his side go for. As far as you can see, that's the record of sins. And they put him on the scale, and the Lord or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask him, do you have anything to say? Have we treat you with unjust? And he replied, I don't have anything. I know all these things. 99 record, each record is as far as his side goes. So, uh, so do you have any excuse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do you have any excuse? Uh, he, do you have anything, any good deed that you've done? So the, the man who would say, would say, no, oh my Lord, I don't have anything to say. I don't think I have any good deed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, because the day of judgment is a day where the absolute justice will happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, uh, 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 yes, you have one hasana, one good deed, uh, uh, and, and you should not be treated unjustly today. What is that hasana? Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa uh, the angel will take a small card, they call it bitaqa, a small card, written on that card, la ilaha illallah, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. Shahad. That's it in that path. So the man would be surprised, shocked. What is this small card compared to the 99 records? What is this to that? So the, the card, this small card, will put on the other side of the scale, and all the records, the 99 records, will be vanished and will flow away. So the, the scholar says about this. Uh, um, hadith that nothing should overweigh the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. You can see how important and how uh, 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 I mean, crucial it is on the day of judgment. So, La ilaha illallah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will uh, uh, save us from the hellfire uh, as the Prophet Muhammad told us. And, and then uh, and another, uh, I mean, the ways to attain this and to enter the paradise, there is, uh, again, uh, a lot. Uh, and the, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the way that uh, in, in a hadith, من قرأ آية الكرسي دبر كل صلاة المكتوبة لم يمنعه من دخول الجنة إلى الموت. Meaning of that hadith, nothing will stand between you, uh, if you, if you recite آية الكرسي after each salah, if, after each obligatory salah, uh, nothing should stand between you and Jannah except death. So, Subhanallah, and, uh, we, you pray, read Surah uh, Ayat al Kursi after the Salah, and, and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells you in a hadith that if you, if if anyone dies after that, he's inshallah in Jannah. Out of the uh, look, how, how merciful Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And in Jannah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ." No person or no souls knows what is kept hidden from them of the light of the eyes as a reward for they, what they used to do. So the, in Jannah, that's a different story. So the reward after, inshallah, we get the, uh, I mean, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the grant, uh, granted, be granted of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and enter the paradise. Uh, the description of the paradise is just... Uh, I mean, it's out of imagine, uh, our imagination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us in a, in a, in a, in a, in a hadith that uh, in the Jannah, that uh, he, he prepared, he, he says in the hadith Qudsi, I have prepared for my righteous worshiper what no eyes has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, and no human heart has ever conceived. So whatever you have in your imagination, you will never imagine what is in the in the in Jannah. Uh, uh, the Prophet Muhammad tells in another hadith that in Jannah there is a hundred level, 
uh, and, and the distance between the uh, one level and another, it's as the distance between the earth and the uh, and the heaven, or the, uh, the distance between the earth and the sky. And it tells us also in another hadith that, that the place that you step on in Jannah, that's the place of your feet, of your feet, uh, it's well, uh, it's better when uh, of whatever you have in this world, in this dunya, and whatever you have there. And in Jannah, there is a tree that uh, uh, the the uh, running horse would take a hundred years to cross that uh, tree. Uh, so many things in Jannah that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, rewards are uh, are endless. I mean, uh, well, forever young, for, uh, you don't um, uh, urinate, you don't uh, uh, feel despair, you don't feel sad, you don't feel uh, inv- any bad things, it's not, it's it's not going to be in Jannah. And even uh, in, 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 a, in that context, a man came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, uh, ask him, is there a horse in Jannah? Is there horses in Jannah? He, he's a, a Bedouin guy, and he loves horses. Is there a horse in Jannah? So the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi replied, if Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala granted you Jannah, or uh, permitted you to enter Jannah, uh, you, there will be a horse in Jannah that flies. Not only a horse run, that also flies. And another man came, he also Bedouin, he says, is there camels in Jannah? He loves the camel. He, that's not what he knows. I mean, is there camels in Jannah? So the Prophet replied, in, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits you to enter Jannah, you will have whatever you want, whatever you cross your mind. Even if, in another hadith, even if you, for example, someone lost their children, or even you, sometimes you love your child in a specific age. So, and you want to see your child in that age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you that. The, the, the child will be in that age, that, uh, the way you like, and, so you don't, if, uh, whenever you, you want something, you will have it in Jannah. Definitely you will have it in Jannah. That's the ultimate reward of, uh, in Jannah. And of course, the, 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 highest, reward, the highest reward in Jannah, uh, it's the, uh, the, the, then when we look um, at the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people in Jannah, or the Muslims in Jannah, or the believers in Jannah, uh, and Allah subhanahu uh, and they will say, Oh Allah, you have enlightened our, uh, I mean, um, uh, our faces, uh, you saved us from the hellfire and the metas paradise. What would we need more than that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, called them, and the veil should be lifted, and they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, as, as, as uh, the Prophet Muhammad described, as you, when you look at the full moon, and you like it, in, the, uh, in Jannah, you will look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, uh, as, uh, you know, as you look at the moon, and uh, maybe more than that. It's just an example to uh, make our mind, or uh, make our mind understand what is uh, the part, what is the, I mean, uh, how is the reward of the Jannah. So at the end of this, uh, of, uh, uh, everything, um, uh, to conclude our uh, talk here, so we talked about the mercy, we talked about the reward of that uh, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, uh, this is, this is uh, a very important message to say that we cannot always um, uh, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with love alone. We love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we fear him at the same time. That's the balance of the uh, believer. And again, when we talk about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean that uh, we call anyone to... Uh, commit sins or to, uh, do more sins, we actually call them to repent and go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, because, uh, the, uh, I mean, this is, this is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ones that say, wala tunafira. So call the people not to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, frighten them, I would say. So uh, th- this is an important message to, uh, uh, to convey to anyone, um, or if you have anyone you know, uh, feel despair, or he feel like he's wasted all his uh, life in sins, he can go back. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive the sin of the non-believer when he says shahada, when he enters Islam, he forgive all the sins. He, uh, do you think he's not going to forgive the sins when you repent to him? Yes, 
the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu tells us, "Nadam tawba wa ta'ib min al-dhanb kamalna dhanbana." If you repent from a sin, is that is is as if you haven't done that sins, uh, and uh, Subhanallah, يعني uh, ال يعني the repentance is important and uh, to call the people and I, and I think we, we're going to find many people they think they have done all the sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will not forgive them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the most merciful and most forgiving one so we should call them and we tell them that Allah uh, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's actually uh, can uh, uh, include them in uh, under that umbrella and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall inshallah forgive all the sins as long as they go back to him every time. And uh, uh, in, in that matter, uh, there is a lot of hadith. I, mean, I cannot conclude. Uh, I think the time is almost uh, up for uh, to conclude our speech. But again, uh, so call the people for, to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let them love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, worship him and it, and again when when you when you even hear the adhan the adhan is actually allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling for you so that's the one you love and uh, he's calling for you and uh, so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jannah for us and our parents and all the muslims uh, uh, alive or dead and uh, we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to bless us uh, uh, and gather us in jannah as he gathered us here in this masjid جزاكم الله خير ربنا اعطينا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار and that's i think uh, i could conclude my speech thank you جزاكم الله خيرا برادر فاركار for the reminder tadi seperti digambarkan banyak pengingat kita bagaimana sifat rahmah rahmin rahman dan rahim dari Allah Subhanahu wa taala rahmatnya sangat luas sekali siapapun kita kalau kita datang kepada Allah insya Allah Allah tidak segan-segan akan memberikan rahmatnya dan juga tadi disinggung ada satu hadis oleh beliau yang juga tercakup di Arba'in Nawawiyah hadis 42 ya di mana sebesar apapun dosa kita kalau kita datang kepada Allah insya Allah makfirah Allah ada di sana ya Allah tidak akan pedulikan even If the the sin is as high as the sky, yeah, or as like as uh, big as the the world itself, inshallah, but Allah will always be forgiving for everyone that come back to Him, asking for forgiveness, inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan kasiran. Before we close, if there is any question, probably or clarification or anything dari bapa bapa ibu ibu sekalian, jelas ya. Insyaallah is very clear. Jazakumullah khairan, Brother Farkad, for the reminder for us. It's really very beautiful speech about the rahmah rahim dari Allah and also the makfirah Allah. Jazakumullah khairan. Terima kasih bapa ibu sekalian atas waktunya dan juga terima kasih ibu ibu yang juga sudah menyiapkan breakfast for us as well. Insyaallah breakfast will be ready after that. Dan terima kasih sudah datang juga bersama kami kita menikmati tausiah. Sejak tadi dari Brother Farkad Demikian mari kita akhiri dengan doa Kafartul Majlis Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Subhanakallahumma wabihamdika Syahadu ala ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atu bilaik Jazakumullah karin kasiran Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh